Hi everyone, welcome to the Debian Derivatives panel. Um, I'm Paul Wise, I started the Debian Derivatives Census and have been working on the Derivatives front desk, desk for a while. Um, for we have Colin Watson representing Ubuntu, Raphael Herzog representing Kali Linux, um, Jean, I don't know how to pronounce this, Jean-Michel representing Doodoo Linux, and Wookie representing MDebian, and Holger Levson representing Debian Edu, a blend. Okay, so um, we'll start by, maybe you can give us an introduction to your derivatives and blends and uh, your role in those derivatives. Okay, hi, uh, as Paul said, I'm Colin Watson. I work in Ubuntu. Uh, where if anybody doesn't know what Ubuntu is, it's a um, general purpose, mass market, uh, Linux distribution, uh, based on Debian Unstable, aiming at uh, uh, user friendliness and a number of specific products. Uh, I specifically work on it, we're sponsored by Canonical. Um, I specifically uh, work on mostly the best layer of user space. So I work on installers, uh, bootloaders, uh, package management tools. Uh, I also do a fair bit of uh, release engineering work, so things like our uh, uh, package management, uh, sorry, things like our uh, archive management and image building tools, that sort of thing. Um, uh, if you want to hear more about the latter part of that, uh, Steve Langasek and I are running a talk on uh, Thursday afternoon, which I think is entitled uh, Ubuntu Daily Quality Improvements, and we'll be going into more, a lot more depth on it there. I'm Rafael Herzog, I'm working uh, part-time for Kali Linux, uh, which is a deri derivative uh, dedicated to penetration testing with lots of security tools. Uh, it's mm, uh, baked by uh, Offensive Security, uh, a company which uh, sells training on uh, security training, and uh, they use Kali Linux as a product to gather, uh, yeah, to give them a good image and to find, uh, find customers and stuff like that. Uh, I'm we're really, really small, uh, a few uh, part-time people uh, because, well, they do, they do work in the security field and they do also work uh, to package uh, the tools that they use. And uh, I'm mainly doing uh, all the infrastructure part uh, and everything related, yes, to Debian installer and building the image and keeping up with the build demons and stuff like that for them. I'm Jean-Michel Philippe. I'm uh, the founder of Doodoo -Doo Linux. Uh, this is a computer system uh, targeted at children from two. So we try to uh, make uh, a computer system as easy to use as uh, gaming consoles. Um, we are uh, currently in use in uh, several uh, nursery schools uh, in France. And uh, we have uh, 43 uh, language teams on uh, TransFX. So uh, it's quite used, uh, quite used in uh, around the world. Um, one of our uh, objectives is to stimulate uh, children's ful fulfillment uh, using uh, digital technologies. We also want them to uh, master technology uh, for real. Uh, if you feel interested uh, in this topic, uh, I, I will. Uh, uh, speak uh, in a lightning talk on Saturday, uh, and uh, oh, that's that's all. Uh, hi, I'm Wookie. Um, uh, again, we've had various MDebian talks over the last ten years, so hopefully most of you have worked out what it is by now. But uh, if not, uh, it's uh, an attempt to make Debian smaller. Fundamentally, um, uh, it's evolved somewhat over the years. Uh, initially, we made uh, quite a lot of changes um, to make things run on small machines, uh, and that produced an enormous maintenance load, which fundamentally was too hard. So we stopped doing that, uh, and now we just use uh, exactly the same binaries as Debian produces, but with all the crap removed, um, and a reduced package set. So it's about 3,000 packages rather than 17,000. Um, which, of course, reduces your metadata size as well. Uh, and the nice thing about that is it can be entirely automated, so it is. Um, the, we have stable releases synchronized with Debian's, 
and now in fact mdebian is available from the debian ftp servers so we've got quite closely integrated with debian it's um it is a derivative but we don't really change anything uh, in a sense uh, from the point of the view of binaries uh, we've also provided tool chains cross tool chains for a long time to enable cross building so a lot of the cross building stuff that has been made to work has been tested in mdebian first uh, and increasingly in ubuntu first um, and we badly need to stop doing that uh, and get it all into Debian. Um, there's various other bits and bobs, but that's basically it. Hello, I'm Holger Lifsen, developer, FTP master, and documentation maintainer for Debian Edo, which is a Debian sub-project, exists since 12 years. We started as a CDD, which is now bl called Blend. For 7.2, for VZ 7.2, we might um, be 100% Debian, this still needs to be discussed with the stable release masters, but there's five packages which where we have the version in Jesse, we would like them in VZ and they just only um, um, apply to all packages. So what we are is a streamlined installer for AMD 64 and i386, where there are four profiles to choose, standalone, then the main server which what exists, needs to exist, which then an LTSP server profile, which you can add on the main server or on other servers, a workstation installation, and LTSP clients via PXE. Therefore, we have documentation in six languages, which describes the setup from a um, school admin point of view. Um, it's a out of the box configured for schools and universities, but really it can be used in offices or wherever, because basically it's just a um, out of the box working setup with some education applications which you can just remove with upget or you can add your own. So Debian Edo is basically a different kind of installer for networks setup. So now we'll uh, open it up for questions from the audience and if there are none then I have some pre-prepared questions. Okay, I'll start with one that I'm semi-interested in. Some of the derivatives have um, like pre-installed images. Um, could s those of you who cr are creating such images, could you say something about how you do it and how we could integrate that into Debian? Uh, so you're you're talking about the sort of thing that you would uh, copy onto a, onto a system in OEM style. Um, yeah, we've been we've been doing this kind of thing since about uh, Ubuntu 5.10 or thereabouts. Um, although it took a while for any actual OEMs to pick it up after that. The um, uh, so this, for for a while, all of the Ubuntu uh, installation images have been uh, have been. Uh, live images by default, or at least the desktop ones have been uh, live file system style. So you have a you have a file system tree. Your installer copies it all all, all onto disk and fiddles about with it until it works with the um, with the system that you're installing onto. Uh, and uh, this this sort of thing works quite well with an OEM model, although there are um, there are obvious differences. Uh, at the moment, we build everything using live build uh, for the last couple of releases. Uh, the, uh, we have a, a live boot system that's similar to the one used in Debian, although for historical reasons, they're a bit divergent. Um, regarding uh, the sort of things that you need to change when you, when you uh, copy onto the target system, you obviously have to go around and uh, uh, make sure that you replace any components of the uh, of the system that are that are unique that are supposed to be machine unique so uh, uh, host keys the popularity contest id um, that sort of thing uh, at the moment we just have a we just have a hard-coded list in the installer unfortunately that uh, where we go around and deep could reconfigure various packages uh, i'd much prefer to see some kind of system of a directory of hooks that people could drop, that package maintainers could drop in for to declare that sort of thing. So I had a thought on that. Maybe um, we could have support in dpackage for systems that are not yet configured for the the hardware that they're installed on. So the open SSH keys, for example, would be generated on first boot. Maybe 
Uh, well, I'm the I'm the open air search maintainer, conveniently, but uh, <laughs> I think that I, I well, indeed, um, I don't know what the deep cache maintainer is going to say. I uh, I feel I feel kind of like that's an unnecessary thing to have in deep cache. That uh, it's the sort of thing that we can uh, that we can declare using much more lightweight hooks than than that and uh, achieve much the same goal. Well, I don't know if. Uh, you, I, I think there's a Google Summer of Code project on it, or they w at least there was an idea of doing one. And uh, I had a f discussion once with Didier Rabou on this topic. I believe that uh, just a shared depth of question would be enough. So, so uh, m maybe DDI in OEM mode could uh, set a, 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 a uh, a precede and uh, the post and of the various ser services would uh, not do uh, what they are supposed to do on first boot and only do it on later in, uh, in some way. Uh, maybe with uh, uh, maybe hooking into a, a, a startup script uh, which is generic enough or something like that. But I don't need, don't think you need to change DPKG to handle that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, coming back to you, do you want other answer on the OEM question, maybe? Or yeah, well, Kali doesn't have really OEM image uh, except well, y we provide live image, so live build is doing all the fancy stuff for us. Right now, uh, for Judo Linux, we are not really uh, concerned by uh, cryptographic needs, of course, because it's for children. Uh, but uh, in a quite near future, we may uh, need uh, a, a cryptographic key because we have uh, currently an issue with uh, web content filtering. We are using uh, Dance Guardian, and uh, it is not able to uh, analyze uh, encrypted uh, HTTP traffic. Uh, so. Um, uh, uh, a, a possible solution I understood uh, is to uh, uh, introduce uh, a local proxy uh, with uh, HTTP secured HTTP, and uh, in this case we would need uh, uh, a, a cryptographic key for the local proxy. Uh, in this case, we would need um, uh, on our uh, live uh, CD something to uh, regenerate the key uh, each time uh, the system is booted. And of course, when it is pre-installed, uh, the same uh, issue uh, is occurring. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, making images. Yeah, this is a subject dear to my heart. I could give you a whole talk about this. Um, so we supply lots of architectures, uh, MG64, i386, RMEL, RMHF, MIPSL, PowerPC, MIPS. So, and in practice, mostly people using MDebian are installing on non-x86 small systems. So you have to cross-make images, and Debian's stuff basically doesn't do that very well um, because we expect to be able to run configure scripts at unstall and unpack time. Um, and uh, that's a problem if you can't run it because it's the wrong architecture. Um, so uh, we invented a thing called multi-strap, which um, uses apt and dpackage rather than doing what dbootstrap does, which is to explicitly avoid using apt and dpackage because it's intended to run on non-Debian boxes as well. Um, and that actually works. So the problem with that is that there is no way to say, uh, I've unpacked this, but I can't run the configure script. Um, but the pre you can't run pre-inst scripts before you unpack because uh, you can't run the scripts now and you've got to unpack it. Uh, so what we just do is install everything without running pre-int scripts. Now, actually, they nearly always uh, are intended to fix previous cockups. So uh, this uh, actually nearly always works, except where things create their user in the pre-int script and so on. So want to yeah, this, this is exactly what the first stage of the bootstrap does. Uh, and packages do have to, it's an extra constraint in packages that they have to behave in some quite specific ways. We've had some amazingly difficult to debug problems with it. Uh, yeah, uh, but the bootstrap has another, um, so it does do that. Um, but that means, because it 
unpacks them again using dpackage later, you have to have the debs in the image. So now the image is twice the size because you've got everything unpacked and all the debs so it can unpack them again afterwards, which seems slightly crap. And the bootstrap can only take everything from one source, which uh, in the real world of embedded distros is a serious limitation because in practice, everybody always wants the stuff out of stable and some other packages out of their local repo, which might even be proprietary stuff. So one of the things, so an apt, of course, can take stuff from anywhere. So using apt to get whatever's needed to satisfy your dependencies is actually much nicer, but we always have this problem with the preint scripts. Now, in practice, it works well enough. If you're making a specific image for a particular product, um, you just write some hacky scripts to do anything important in the in preint scripts, um, which works. So I just did it for the ARM64 port because, um, so you can work around this by using QEMU, um, uh, except where you haven't got a QEMU because it's a new architecture. Um, so it's a useful tool, uh, but it does have its issues. As Colin says, there's weird things go wrong if you don't run your preint scripts. Um, so yes, that's what we do. Uh, and that tool is already in Debian and has been for years. So if you want to use multi-strap, you just app get it, use it there. Um. Yeah, Debian Edo mostly uses the Debian tools, so we build CDs with, like, with CD image. We have modified DI to ask these profile questions and also to have everything asked in the beginning, which I think now went back into the eye, I'm not fully sure. We lack the resource that the people doing, um, building a live system, even though it would be trivial. So if somebody wants to help Debian Edu, building a live CD would be great for VZ. Um, and what we mostly need is packages which support configuration better, like w um, with ETC profile D, so that we can drop in our configuration without modifying the package and breaking upgrade parses. That's really what Debian Edu mostly needs, and this is from a few selected packages. So, Any questions from the audience? No? Okay. Um, so I'll have a more general question for you. Um, what can Debian do to make the lives of your derivatives easier? I got to go first again. Um, when 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 Paul asked me this uh, before the uh, before the session, the, the first thing I thought of was applier patches. Uh, I've <laughs> I've got about uh, something like 80 unapplied patches in the BTS that have been sitting there for ages from my work account. Um, but, uh, and you know, if you multiply it up by all the people working in Ubuntu, it's actually quite a lot. Uh, the in, in general, uh, doing a good job at keeping your package building cleanly causes us to spend a lot less time uh, going around, you know, we, we make a change, we find that, oh, actually the package blows up due to this several package deep chain of something, and we end up, we end up spinning wheels quite a lot and going around and uh, going back and fixing things that really ought to have just worked in Debian. Um, the vast majority of packages do build extraordinarily cleanly across, uh, across a wide swathe of time, but, uh, but we generally have uh, a few hundred build failures active at any one time. And uh, uh, keeping, keeping your package building cleanly uh, makes, uh, makes a huge difference to derivatives who are trying to make changes that really have, uh, that are really incidental to that. Um, the uh, things like uh, cross building and multi arch improvements these are projects that as wookie said uh, we've been we've been working with in debian and uh, other folks in in debian who are interested in those um, and uh, th those sorts of things make a make a huge difference to uh, some of the more exotic things that uh, that uh, derivatives sometimes have to do. And uh, there are the sorts of things that require changes to many, many Debian packages across the board, uh, and uh, that it's really helpful if, uh, if Debian developers can be proactive about uh, enabling their own packages. Uh, for Kali Linux, I have, uh, well, we're, we're based on stable for most packages for all the infrastructure, but we tend to import a newer kernel and uh, well, uh, we patch it a little bit, but uh, kernel are ver very well maintained on the Debian side. Unfortunately, uh, we don't have uh, DA release that goes with them always. And uh, so, uh, 
either we, we keep an older kernel or we have to patch the I ourselves uh, temporarily or and it would be really great if Debian could have a uh, more regular kernel and DI release combined. Uh, that would uh, make it easier for us. Otherwise, uh, I tend to agree with uh, with Colin. Of course, uh, when we tend to submit patch, we, we like we like when it's integrated quite quickly. And uh, well, we're li lacking also uh, a really uh, a team which is dedicated to security tools in Debian. There is a team uh, uh, around forensic tools, but not a generic maintenance team for uh, security tools. And the, well, I guess we will try to create one because uh, 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 because uh, really we have a Kali has a lot of package to contribute, and uh, they are all team maintained by uh, two two or three people on the Kali side, and uh, we really w want to well share the load a bit with uh, Debian on this. So this is something that I'm going to work on in the next few months. For Judo Linux, um, we have uh, our own uh, package repository with uh, tens of packages. Uh, most of them are uh, our own packages that we are uh, building to, uh, s to set up the environment Judo Linux. But uh, we also have um, patch packages uh, from uh, the official Debian Archive. We, are, we have um, uh, upstream versions that are uh, newer than the Debian Archive. And uh, finally, we also have uh, so some software that is not uh, availab available at all in Debian. Uh, so uh, in the end, uh, we have uh, tens of packages three uh, releases and uh, four or five um, architectures. So uh, this is a, a lot of packages uh, to build. Uh, currently, we are uh, unfortunately doing this manually. Uh, so this, uh, this takes a lot of time. This is uh, error prone. And uh, what we are dreaming of is something like uh, the Ubuntu Launchpad. Uh, something that uh, anybody can use and uh, which would be based on the Debian infrastructure so that uh, we get all our packages and uh, our repos repositories uh, built automatically. Uh, this would also help us uh, test uh, new architectures. Uh, recently, someone asked me uh, if uh, Judo Linux is available for PowerPC. And uh, unfortunately, it is not because uh, the developers cannot build on uh, PowerPC. Just jumping on this topic, uh, uh, I agree as well. Uh, there are many Debian infrastructures which are not really easy to use for derivatives. I mean, in Kali Linux, we opted to use rebuild D, we use repro pro, but so we are not, uh, we are not using uh, build D. Uh, and we're not using DAC, and uh, there are many parts uh, that really should be uh, better documented, more easy to use and to set up, because, uh, well, it doesn't make sense for us to, to have to discover uh, every time uh, our, or to build our own solution ba based on tools which are easier to use. So, so I, I'm fixing this for the package tracking system. Uh, I expect other people in Debian to fix it for other parts. We prefer it, but yes. Thanks. So yeah, uh, Raphael just beat me to it. I was about to complain about the fact that it's really hard to make a build D. Um, uh, everybody needs a build D, even if you only maintain one package you want to build over and over again, if you want to build a whole distro. Uh, and the one part we make difficult to reproduce is that. The rest of it's great. Repro is brilliant. S build is brilliant. D package, build everything tools. It's all great. Uh, but build these are a problem. Um, there is a thing called PyBit, which is what MDB and people ended up writing, which uses zero MQ and does building and cross building and might well be something we should pick up and use. Rebuild these okay, but it's a bit thick and a bit broken um, in various ways. Um, but yeah, uh, and Roger keeps threatening to make the build D thing in S build actually work. Um, but it's not quite finished, I think. Um, so anyway, that, that is a thing somebody needs to work on. It will be lovely. Um, other things while I, before I forget what I was going to say. Um, so most of what we've 
wanted has gone into Debian, and generally we have no complaints over how that's gone. It's taken a long time, but some of it was difficult. You know, depackage vendor and cross-building support and multi-arch support. Uh, I would say that the, again, accepting packages quickly is great. Sometimes a multi-arch patch takes a day. Some of them are still moldering after a year and a half. Um, that's annoying. Uh, sometimes the freeze doesn't help. Um, that's always true. Um, yeah, that's mostly it. Somebody actually wanted to say something in the audience. We should probably let him. Yes. Didn't, wasn't Paul Tag working on a build, build D system called dbuild.me or something like that? I don't know much about it other than that it exists. And he's generally very excited about things, so I'm sure if you talk to him, he'll... Paul Tag. Um, for Debian Edo, we really use, only use packages from Debian main, so that's not an issue. We do have, have our own archive, um, mostly for being able to test faster. Um, for Squeeze, it's also needed to build the images, the final ones. For VZ, hopefully not. Um, we use duck, a duck install for that, which is clearly overkill, because it's 10 packages in there. Or, yeah. And we hope to switch to the Debian form of PPAs, which were set probably to arrive maybe this year later. That would be quite cool for Debian Edu, so we can just use FTP Debian org for everything. I could ask the opposite of that question. Um, is there one or two things achievable or maybe aspirational that you think your derivatives could do better by Debian for? Um, so the previous question was, what could Debian do for you? Is there some things that you could do for Debian, maybe, that you're not doing now that you could do? Or maybe things that are maybe more pipe dreams that you should do? <coughs> Uh, obviously, uh, we have lots of uh, packages that, that are not yet in Debian, so the first uh, thing to do is to contribute them all to Debian. Uh, well, it's going to... So some, some of them are uh, mostly ready because they are quite clean, but some of them are really ugly because sometimes they want the software quickly, and uh, I don't know if you have tried to package some security tools which use uh, Ruby with lots of... Uh, games which are downloaded on a specific version and which is not the current one and, uh, and you have the opposite problem as well Debian has sometimes quite older package so uh, it's really a headache to to package them properly for Debian and uh, we have uh, quite a few packages which are which do bundle up multiple gems in it and this is not that going to you benefit from not having to abide by Debian's stricter quality standards. We do benefit, but we do suffer from it uh, as well because, uh, well, we, we, we... It makes your life easier in some ways. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, it would be nice to, to be able to contribute more tools, and uh, but that is the main value that we can bring to Debian. Uh, I don't see... Well, we can go further, maybe integration, but uh, I'm not sure it's going to be useful. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously the uh, the stack of the stack of patches that we have constitutes technical debt from our point of view, and uh, uh, we clearly need to pay that down for both for our good, for our own good and for uh, for Debian's. Um, the uh, th the more we do with uh, with trying to improve our own distributions quality, the more it uh, it becomes obvious that uh, the the best way to do this is often helping with. Uh, uh, with particularly big uh, transitions in Debian and shifting shifting unstable forward at the at the fastest possible rate, and uh, uh, I think the the more people uh, from our side that we can encourage to join Debian the relevant Debian teams to to help out with those the better I think um, we have uh, we have quite a bit of manpower that uh, that can be put to use for for a variety of things and. Uh, uh, Again, I'm, I'm probably going to be talking more about this on Thursday afternoon, so I won't go on too far now.
So, yeah, and we worked out uh, probably about nine years ago that the easiest way to make our lives easier was to put stuff back upstream. And so basically all the cross-building and multi-arch stuff, well, it's not been entirely driven by MDebian, but that was part of it. And so that's actually been quite a significant contribution. And I think it's fair to say Ubuntu has helped a lot because, to be honest, a transition like that is easier to get done in Ubuntu than it is in Debian because you've only got to persuade a relatively small set of people with commit access to everything uh, rather than thousands of developers who go, what is this crazy talk? Um, so yeah, we have done some things. And there's this PyBit tool, so. Yeah, that's, that's a, this is really more than an earlier question, but uh, one, one thing that, uh, that I've very much noticed when trying to push uh, particularly multi-arch changes back into Debian is that we spend an awful lot of time explaining over and over and over and over again uh, what, what we're doing. Um, and uh, it, it, would be, it would be helpful if, uh, if more people kept up with that kind of thing, I think. Um, it's not directly related to derivative derivatives, but I would be interested uh, to hear your ideas, if you have ideas, how Debian could become more current to keep being stable, but also to have more uh, current software. And what would your advice be for Debian in this regard? Uh, we have an awful lot of places at the moment where we rely on uh, we rely on human effort to uh, to do a lot of our testing in Debian. Um, so the whole the whole process of migrating from unstable to testing is completely reliant on humans telling it. Well, not completely, but it's very it's very extensively reliant on humans telling us whether it worked or not. And uh, in order to make that work, in order to allow enough time for this whole process to operate, we have to artificially slow ourselves down to allow ourselves time for humans to give us feedback. Um, the, the more that we can move towards uh, automated testing and responding quickly to, you know, uh, promoting packages uh, quickly in response to those, uh, to those automated tests rather than having this very human driven process, uh, the more I think we'd be able to move forward much more quickly and with many fewer uh, incredibly complicated tangles than we have at the moment. On Kali, we have a repository named Bleeding Edge, and where we basically use our package, and uh, oh well, we 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 grab the latest upstream version, and when we detect one, and we put back the Debian directory from the former, and we try to build it and make it available to advanced user who want to look it up, and so this gives us early feedback of whether new versions are working or not without actually having to do lots of work. Um, uh, maybe Devin could uh, uh, have some similar infrastructure as well. And it would help maintainers. And, and because uh, quite often our problem is uh, Devin is taking too long. Right? Things tend to get down, but there are many maintainers who are not uh, in interested in doing it ri right away. They want their, the latest version and a good version for the next table but they don't care about the current version in, in unstable un, until a <coughs> few few days before the freeze. And that's the problem. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know how to fix this problem, um, but uh, you notice it particularly uh, wearing my Lenaro hat instead of my Debian hat. Uh, you know, they're building the very latest everything all the time, and there's quite a big impedance mismatch with trying to get that stuff into Debian at all, you know, even running it on the system. Uh, so yeah, faster would be better, but I don't really have anything useful to say about, um, beyond what Colin said, about trying to automate things, because it's the only way to make things go faster, I think. Well, one thing, is, is clearly the main problem is on the release management, and it's a difficult issue. But uh, I, I do believe that uh, uh, PPA could really help because we could have transition prepared in parallel. And instead of the release team having to say, so next one is this one, and we'll take the tag and it needs to, to go it through, we could have multiple transition prepared and the first one which is released is going to be the next one instead of uh, having a human to 
uh, only uh, some guesses from humans to decide. There's one potential problem there is that transitions get entangled with each other because of the dependency trees and stuff. It's, it's, not a, it's not a silver bullet by any means. I entirely agree with Raphael would help. Um, one, thing, one thing we often notice in, in Ubuntu, I've uh, 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 driven several transitions there, um, which, we've, uh, you know, which we've started in our development release about the same time Debian does, often because we've just auto-synced something from Unstable and then have to finish it. Uh, the, it's very noticeable uh, if, when you're following this in Ubuntu that uh, there's, a, there's a handful of transitions that are managed exceptionally well. The, uh, the Perl transitions are, are wonderful. We, uh, uh, we, we generally find that the vast majority has been pre-prepared by the Perl team and there's absolutely no problem. Um, there, are, there are various other transitions where we find that uh, there are a couple where I've found that I basically had to do all the work uh, because the, if somebody had started in Debian and hadn't, hadn't really, hadn't properly tried to build everything that was going to need to be rebuilt. Um, and uh, d preparing this sort of thing in a PPA, in a PPA you would still have to, you'd still have to effectively redo the work in Unstable, you'd, ha you'd have to rebuild everything uh, because, partly because of this entanglement problem but you might at least have some chance of ensuring that people have built everything before they start, which is not currently the case. Jörg Jasper <coughs> just said on IRC that he plans to start on this this week, so on this PPA bike shed plan. I think bike shed was the name we agreed on. But I leave it to him. Cool. So, um, similar question. So, is the release cycle working for you? And for the derivatives that aren't based on Debian stable, how is your release process different or better than Debian? And how can we integrate some of those changes? Uh, I'm saying this a lot, but I'll talk about most, in this, most of this on Thursday. Um, uh, we, but briefly, we branch from Unstable. The, the main effects that the release cycle has on us is that uh, uh, essentially the flow of incoming changes sometimes slows down. We have to start syncing from, uh, from experimental instead, which is a lot more ad hoc. Um, we'd, we'd generally be a lot happier with shorter freezes. Um, I think everybody would. Kali is based on um, Debian stable, but there is no really no real policy. We well, uh, when we started, uh, we we worked on Wizzy because we knew it w it was going to be the next stable. We we had a number of problem because well, all, all the tools were not really ready during the freeze, and we contributed uh, quite a few fixes to live build, to even to GDM for accessibility issues and to m <laughs> multiple detail well important things, but. Uh, and we, we do have two versions in parallel, Kali and Kali Dev, but we mainly use it uh, for a s few tests. It's not really uh, continuously main maintained as a Kali Dev one. Uh, we have uh, a proposed duplicate area, so we we're preparing s new stuff for the current version always. So, so we're not really set on a specific uh, Base. It might be that in one year we're going to use different testing because we is too old for too many of our packages. It depends. Currently, uh, the stable release of uh, the latest stable release of Joodle Linux is still based on uh, all stable, but our objective is uh, to be based on uh, stable, of course. Uh, the release cycle uh, is quite good for us because uh, we don't have so much time. Uh, to spend on uh, uh, setting up the environment uh, for a, a new version uh, of Debian. Uh, that said, um, the main issue we could have with uh, the current release cycle is uh, freshness of drivers uh, for people who want to use uh, a printer that just uh, they've just bought uh, at the supermarket, for example. 
Uh, and so um, regularly we see people coming and telling us, uh, well, I can't uh, make this uh, work with Judo Linux, and our answer is unfortunately, uh, yes, we know uh, uh, we are uh, still using uh, software that uh, is uh, two or three years old, and uh, we cannot do anything for you. Uh, so uh, our issue is not the really cycle itself, but the, um, uh, the availability of uh, uh, fresher uh, packages for drivers. And uh, I'm not sure there, there is really a simple solution for, for this problem. Yeah, that was mentioned in the kernel boff, um, and we're going to try some stuff, because the same problem as buying any new hardware. may or may not work with old kernels. Um, uh, so because our thing is entirely automated, uh, we have no problem whatsoever with the release cycle. Um, everything in the stable gets processed as it comes out, and when there's a stable release, we just do a stable release exactly like Debian's and copy the install scripts and change them a bit. Uh, sorry, the install readme thing. Uh, so yeah, it works fine. Um, because most people want to work in unstable, except for some people who actually want to ship stable stuff. And in practice, they have a load of their own packages you know, other people use our stuff to make actual other distros rather than us being anything other than exactly what Debian currently puts out, and that's fine. We, <coughs> we rely, like Debian either relies a lot on the Debian stable release process itself, so we um, use Debian, that's Debian. So what we do on top of this is manual testing of our features, and since half a year we also have Jenkins jobs which test the actual installation, which helped us to find some bugs there. We don't yet test the functionality or the network services combined with the main server and another system, but that we plan to do this for during development really daily, automatically also. So we have two minutes left. Um, is there anything any of you any of the panelists want to say about Debian or your derivative or something else? I don't really. Um, Debian provides a great best for us. It's uh, uh, it's an astonishing effort to uh, uh, that's kept things working over this you know massive period of twenty years and. Uh, uh, notwithstanding Joey's, Joey's talk, I see no reason why it can't continue for 20 more. Well, Kali is only starting, uh, so we, we, we are planning to be uh, for multiple years, so obviously we, uh, we want Debian to strive uh, for a long time, and uh, we're going to do our little share, <laughs> not much, but a bit a bit. Um, yeah, nothing special. Well, uh, if we have chosen uh, Debian for Judo Linux is just uh, because it's great. Uh, I it works very well. Uh, it's uh, full of uh, various software. Uh, and of course, uh, this is driven by a community. So yeah, you could argue that Debian's a crappy base for an embedded distribution, but actually um, it works a lot better than people expect it to. Uh, I think, as Colin says, you've done a brilliant job. Uh, the only thing is, uh, please take our patches about weird cross-building crap, okay? Uh, it's important. Uh, it doesn't matter if you don't understand, just put it in. Um, Debian Edo is really happy. Debian user, um, stable user, so thank you for your support, supporting your packages in stable and also for providing stable backports. That's very useful. Thank you.